So I just unmuted myself. So it seems like you missed my introduction, but I just introduced my wonderful co-presenters whose bios you can see here on the screen. So during this presentation, you will learn about the Literacy Handbook project that served to bridge research and practice for my pre-service students, about their experience and learning during this process, and the impact this endeavor may have had on their learning of the content of reading and on teaching that content in particular. I want to give you some context as to where and when this project took place. So the creation of this literacy handbook took place discreetly over the course of three separate classes, uh, two undergraduate courses and one graduate course with teacher candidates who at the time were working with me via a um, hybrid format, mostly in-class sessions, apart from the graduate students who were working with me virtually. And their fieldwork experience was virtual due to the COVID restrictions and policy at the time. The undergraduate students were placed in an elementary school. They engage in virtual field experience, which entailed both synchronous and asynchronous teaching. Synchronously, they conducted reading groups, assessments, read alouds, and whole group lessons. Asynchronously, they pre recorded interactive read alouds, teaching an array of skills for students to access on their days at home. So some of the overarching goals of the class was to provide authentic literacy experiences to teacher candidates who at the time had limited access to classrooms, to be critical of my practice and to be intentional in teaching the foundational knowledge related to learning to read, such as letter knowledge, phonemic awareness, decoding, orthographic mapping, but also all aspects of reading instruction, which included phonological awareness, specifically phonemic awareness, phonics, including orthographic mapping, fluency, all aspects of word knowledge, comprehension, both narrative and informational, as well as writing instruction. Um, and we did this with the unifying goal of each of these to marry uh, the learning of what research says is effective instruction and why with practice in actionable and reproducible ways for my pre-service students. Okay. And the goal of this project was to mix research, reading and knowledge with writing using a critical lens and with a hands-on approach to teaching the literacy tenants we were learning about, because I believe that building our foundational knowledge based on research and evidence is important in order to improve the impact of our instructional or um, practice and decision-making ability to aptly apply it to serve the needs of our students in classrooms, all within a culture that actively projects the love and joy of learning to read. So I really wanted to capture these three elements with this literacy handbook project. These are the broad research questions that I used to frame this literacy handbook project. Number one was, how can we teach the foundational skills for learning to read so that teacher candidates develop mastery over the concepts and agency to implement the knowledge of teaching reading in an engaging way? And two, will teacher candidates' knowledge of teaching reading, particularly the foundational skills, be impacted by engaging in the literacy handbook assignment and methods course. Um, so taking into part just the fact that we were doing this assignment, but also the content of the course. So the purpose of this endeavor was to help teacher candidates build a repertoire of skills and strategies to teach young readers and writers that is based on critical evaluation of research and evidence. So I really wanted them to actively go through this process with me so that they could again replicate it when they, were te when they are teachers. Um, and the implementation looked like taking information in thinking about how the application of it looks like for students in a classroom and understanding that this part is dynamic, right? Because your classrooms are all different, your students have different needs and it changes from year to year. So knowing how to meet those needs. The main objectives were for the teacher candidates to become comfortable with finding, reading and critiquing articles. And this included writing about each article they read to use these articles plus the text in the class to inform their practice by creating lessons, activities, games, with thoughtful selection of materials to teach each component of literacy. And the purpose of this was to help teacher candidates develop a solution-oriented mindset towards meeting the needs of their future students. Uh, for each component of literacy that you see here on the right, students read one to two articles of their choosing. Some selections were curated by me, 
And after the first iteration of the project, it also included using a database uh, to search articles within parameters in place and with a critical lens. And students were given instruction and guidance on active reading, annotating, finding main idea, discerning the effectiveness of interventions that were put forth by various authors. And I used elements of self-regulated strategy instruction to help students write about each article. So SRSD is an evidence-based, highly effective method for teaching writing from grades K through college level. And these elements included supports to help with task analysis, to help them set goals for their writing, plans for staying on track, um, positive self-talk and evaluation of their work. It also included guidance with prompts and starters. Exemplars were also provided. Drafting templates were provided as well as checklists to help them understand um, how to do this academic writing and synthesize their knowledge in order to write like an expert of these articles. After critical evaluation of each element, and we took one element at a time, uh, students learned to take the learning to create lessons and activities. And this was really the heart of the literacy handbook, really the purpose of why we were doing what we were doing. They would target a particular skill or learning within a certain area and students had choices as well. So for example, within phonemic awareness, some students chose to work on isolating phonemes, others on segmenting phonemes, and others even brought in the idea of graphemes to work on orthographic mapping with their lesson and activities. Students used their knowledge to create fun, engaging, purposeful activities. In addition to creating these activities, they thought and wrote lessons on how they would introduce, teach, and facilitate these activities. And then the best part is students had a chance to share their work with each other. In the first iteration, we did not get the opportunity to share with real elementary students, but subsequent groups were able to do that. And this added an, another important element of real student engagement and feedback for what they created. So as I mentioned before this project, um, so this project had been done with both undergraduate and graduate students. And each time um, a pre-test and post-test was given to survey teacher candidates' knowledge of teaching literacy. It was a short response survey. The questions and answers were developed by three literacy acquisition um, researchers and scored. And the Chromeback Alpha was 0.83 uh, for the internal consistency of the measure, which is good. And I should also mention that the inter-reader reliability was 0.85, which is also good. Um, so in addition to this, student um, self-evaluation were elicited in respect to this project and coded for major things. And I will um, share the results of these surveys and these self-evaluations at the end of this presentation, but I'd now like to turn it over to Michaela and then Megan, who's remotely, so they can speak about their experience and learning throughout the course using this Literacy Handbook project. Thank you so much, James. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm so excited to talk about my experience with this project and also reflect on how it helped shape me as a pre-service teacher. Um, so within our Literacy Methods course, um, I found that the textbook was one of my most valuable resources, both within the class and outside. And the reason for that is because this textbook is formatted in a really unique way. So each chapter is organized by each literacy component. And within the chapters, the chapters are broken into a what, why, when, and how format. And so that what portion of the chapter gives a detailed overview of the literacy skill or concept along with detailed examples. The why portion of the chapter explains the importance of that specific literacy concept, along with important research findings and other suggested readings. Um, I found this chapter to be particularly helpful, especially when I wanted to go beyond the text and deepen my own understanding of a specific concept. The when portion of the chapter, that part gives information that is backed, on, backed by research about when to teach a certain literacy concept, when to assess, and when to intervene. And finally, the how portion of the chapter gives um, includes a, uh, complete sample lessons as well as um, explanations on how to teach and model a concept, examples for guided practice, um, and what to look for during observation and assessment. Um, much of my um, inspiration was sourced from the how portion of some of the chapters in the textbook. Now, as far as my process for choosing an article, 
um, for each literacy component, we had a variety of articles that we could choose from. So typically, my first instinct, instinct was to choose topics that were of interest to me, things that I wanted to learn more about. Other times, I would choose articles that were relevant to what we were working on in our fieldwork classrooms. So um, sometimes I would choose articles such as Patricia McCarthy's articles on sound boxes um, to systematically develop phonemic awareness. Um, other times I would choose articles that I wanted to kind of push me out of my comfort zone, challenge myself and address any gaps in my knowledge. After reading the article, I would then begin my writing process. My writing process would begin with an initial reading in which I made detailed annotations in the article. So that would include things that would interest me, things that confused me, things that um, maybe you wanted to make a note of and learn more about. Um, I then would do a subsequent reading of that article in which I made detailed notes, which I found myself actually formatting in the same fashion as a textbook. So in the what portion of my notes, I would list reasons on why the author deemed the skill or concept that was being talked about important. Obviously my what portion would be, what is the main purpose of this article? What is the author trying to convey? Um, the when portion, I would connect that back to the textbook, think about what kind of prerequisite skills would a student need to um, learn this concept of skill that's being talked about. And lastly, the how portion of my notes, I would think about how I could connect the techniques and concepts discussed in the article within my future classroom or my field experience classroom. And then after my note taking and annotation process, I would begin writing using my notes as a guide. And then I would begin summarizing, analyzing, and connection to my field experience. So in creating and sharing the mini lesson and activity, how did I make it effective? Well, my main focus was to really implement the research evidence-based practices that we learned from the textbook in class, any other additional assigned readings, as well as what I've learned in my fieldwork classroom, making sure to really make sure that it is um, based and deeply rooted in the research. How did I make it in fun and engaging? This part was really crucial because I know that students will only want to attend to things that interest them and spark their in, you know, engagement. So I considered what the age group was for the uh, literacy activity that I was creating. And I would think about what, what would interest them. So sometimes I would even use pop culture references to enhance my activities and many lessons. For example, um, there's a phonemic awareness activity that I created um, that was based on an online uh, video game called Among Us, in which players need to try to avoid being captured by the imposter. And so the activity I created, students would need to identify which card out of a set of picture cards was the imposter based on the initial sound. And that's something that's really popular among the third and fourth graders and they absolutely love it. Um, my next consideration was how to make it at the activity meaningful and relevant to students. And so for this part, I made sure to include a statement of why the concept or skill that I was teaching was important for students. And when students understand the why behind what they're learning, they will um, apply that and know it's relevant in the classroom and beyond. And lastly, I've always have left class being sparked with creativity and inspiration from my peers. And I know they worked so hard on their activities and lesson plans as well. And so I have always drew inspiration from them too. And lastly, what my process was like for creating that mini lesson and activity. I used the textbook, specifically the how portion of the chapter that I mentioned for ideas and guidance. I also would browse online resources such as Pinterest and Teachers Pay Teachers. I do want to note, however, that when using online resources, I made sure to use a very critical lens and be very selective about what I included in the final product. Um, I know a lot of times it's easy to just take, you know, copy a lesson, but I took bits and pieces, adapted them, made sure that they were um, based on the research and also met the needs of my students. And so here I just want to give you a brief overview of a few examples of the activities that I created as part of this project. 
And so here on the left, you'll see my vocabulary example. This is a sample lesson that was adapted from the teaching reading source book. And this is an activity on um, creating antonym diamante poems. And so I created this um, scaffolded worksheet in which students would use this to draft their poem. And then they would go ahead and transfer it over into an art project. In the middle here, you'll see my phonemic awareness example that I mentioned previously. This was the one based on that online video game that was really popular with the third and fourth graders. Um, this one was really fun for me to create because it got, I got a chance to be very creative and resourceful. I actually made this pocket chart out of a filing folder and some sheet protectors that I had lying around. So that was really fun. And then lastly here, you'll see my phonics example. This was an example of something that I sourced online from Pinterest and made sure that it was adaptable to the grade level that I was serving. And that was a really fun one as well. So in creating and sharing the literacy lesson and activity, what I really enjoyed was the opportunity that we had for choice. We had a lot of freedom um, when designing our activities. For each component of literacy, there are multiple articles that we can choose from, as I mentioned. And then for the activity portion, whatever our, we could come up with was, um, was great. Um, as far as being creative and resourceful, I mentioned, making that um, pocket chart from supplies I had at home, being creative, thinking outside of the box, thinking about what my students would really get excited about and what they would really enjoy. And from this activity, I didn't expect this, but I actually did gain a, gain a sense of confidence and confidence in being able to um, employ strategies and techniques that I've learned in class and employ them in the classroom. Some of the challenges that I faced during this project um, as was previously mentioned, there were limitations to um, going into the classroom. So we were in our field work classrooms virtually. I would have loved the opportunity to be able to um, teach some of the lessons that I made with the students to see what their response was so that I can go back and edit it appropriately. And another challenge that I mentioned, having a critical lens when researching and gathering inspiration. I know as teachers, sometimes it's easy. Um, it's, we wanna be cute and you know, take ideas that are fun, but it's, I had to really be conscious and remain um, focused on the fact that I needed to make sure that everything that I included in my final project was deeply rooted in research and evidence-based. What was the effect of sharing work with peers? Well, as I mentioned, every time we shared our uh, classwork with our peers, I left there feeling inspired and had a spark of creativity. Just seeing how much work went into it was amazing. Being able to give feedback and exchange ideas about activities with peers also was helpful. So much so that we decided to create an online portfolio, Google Drive, for all of our uh, students to upload their activities and artifacts um, so that we can reference them as future teachers. As for my key takeaways from this assignment, how did this help understand learning about and teaching literacy. This assignment really helped to deepen my foundational knowledge of the components of literacy and also gave me an understanding of how students learn to read at each developmental stage. It gave me an understanding of how students, um, of how to explore the information. It equipped me with best practices and strategies to help support students in their literacy journeys. And I also understood how to apply principles of teaching specifically um, how critical explicit instruction, scaffolding and differentiation is. And through this course and through the literacy handbook, I've also developed a deeper passion and love of literacy. And now that I'm equipped with these strategies, skills and techniques, I'll be able to transfer that love of literacy to my future students. How might this assignment inform your process as a teacher? This assignment taught me how to employ instructional practices and strategies that are deeply rooted in research and evidence so that I can be the most effective teacher possible. And this assignment really helped me to build upon my research and analysis skills, something that I know will be useful because as teachers, we are lifelong learners and I will need to make sure that my skills stay sharp and I continue to evolve as an educator. Um, and I also am now equipped with stronger skills, learning how to read and analyze research academic journal articles, take out what's relevant and can apply it to my classroom. What did I see in my classrooms? 
We're reading about and teaching literacy and then seeing those concepts be modeled in the classroom in action really helped me to connect what I learned in class from the journals, the textbook, helped to really solidify that information. Um, I was in a third grade classroom that I was a mentee in, so I got to observe um, students reading at various reading levels. I got to observe and analyze their writing assignments and seeing their uh, work firsthand gave me the opportunity to apply my knowledge about literacy and got me thinking about how I could help my students improve as well. So thank you so much for listening to my experience. I'd like to now pass it over to my colleague, Megan Chikluna, and she will go ahead and talk about this assignment from her perspective. Okay, I am not Megan. I am just switching the stuff over. So give me one hot second here, friends. Megan, I will let you know when we're ready, okay? Thanks. <laughs> I want to make sure everybody here in the room can hear you. Okay, Megan, you should be good to go. Okay, thank you. I hope that you can all hear me and see me as well as the slides. And if you cannot, feel free to comment in the chat and I will see what I can do. But I'm very thankful that you are all here to hear what we have to say. Um, if you could go to the next slide, please. Thank you. So I'd like to start off by talking about the textbook. And just like Michaela said, this textbook is honestly the most available resource that I have yet to find and read. And that is because of its unique format. It is set up as pictured on the slide with a what, why, when, and how description in each chapter. So I included an example and one of the chapters is about letter knowledge. And so the first question is what? What is letter knowledge? And this is important to know because as future teachers, we obviously have to be able to know the content that we are teaching. The next question is why? And part of this is why is letter knowledge important? And I think that this is one of the most valuable questions because if we don't view what we are teaching as important, then our students will not either. And the next two questions it asks are when and how. So this is asking when should we teach it and how do we teach it? And this was a super vital um, piece of information for us to use when making lesson plans. Um, this textbook is also called the Teaching Reading Sourcebook and it inspired the creation of many lesson plans. I um, was able to use one of the lesson plans they used as an example at the end of one of the chapters for phonemic awareness. And I got to use bits and pieces of it in my lesson and it was very unique how at the end of each chapter they gave examples um, of lesson plans and like Michaela said we would use a critical lens to critique them and then use what we thought would work for our students in our own and new lesson plan. Um, next after reading the textbook we often had to choose an article to read and critique and I found this very challenging but also very rewarding because in each article um, there were examples of studies conducted, and so we were given hard evidence, or sorry, research-based evidence of what does and does not work in classrooms, but we were also given the opportunity to look at it with a critical lens and decide, would this work for my students? And that's where the next section of writing about it comes in. I could easily look at the article and just decide, oh yes, this would work perfectly for all students, but you have to look at the students' demographics, the students' ages, and think critically of would this work for my students and what parts would and what parts wouldn't. And I really appreciated learning how to critique people's work um, in a positive way because it benefits my students from that. Um, on the next slide, um, this was my favorite part, and this was the creation of lesson plans. And so something that made it effective and engaging was the resources that we used. Um, I used many resources, which is something that I found so valuable. We used the textbook, which gave lesson plan examples. Um, we got to use the evidence-based journal critiques, Teachers Pay Teachers, which is a very valuable resource and website, Pinterest, which I use mostly for the creative side. But all of these I found content I could use or borrow from and also creativity as well. And like Michaela said, I would use a critical lens to read over these resources and decide 
if I thought this one worked for my students or not. And I would use bits and pieces to add to my lesson plans, but ultimately make it my own. I also found that it was easy to make it fun and engaging when you learned of what is relevant for the students. Um, when Michaela shared her lesson that she came up with about the imposter activity, that really stuck out to me because the students play this video game all the time and I have never heard of it, but it's a great way to engage the students. And the next question we asked was, what was our process and was it fun? It was absolutely fun because we got to be creative um, but the process was very simply textbook, article, apply. So we would read through the textbook on a certain literacy element, we'd read through an article on the same element, critique it, write about it, and then take all of this knowledge and apply it to our very own lesson plan. Something else that I did often was I would consider the age, location, and interests of students. So that's going back to looking at the demographics of the students because what works for one student in one area might not work for another. And lastly, research, just using all of the resources we have at hand to make an effective lesson plan. The next question is, what was the effect of sharing with peers? This I found also to be incredibly valuable because we made a portfolio at the end of class with all of our lesson plans. And this is something that we can take with us to our future classrooms. And every week we would share what we made with our classmates and it would inspire my next lesson plans. So as you see on the next slide, in the middle I have peer work written. This is the example that Michaela shared earlier. This was I believe one of the first lesson plans that she created. Um, and so if you look at the bottom picture with all the rows of different vocabulary pictures in there, this lesson was about identifying um, initial sounds. And so the student would read through the row of pictures and say sun, soup, ball, and have to identify that the ball is the imposter because it has a different initial sound than the rest. And I thought this was very creative because it's using um, a game that they play all the time on video games to make a lesson plan. And so that's relevant for the student and it'll make them interested in what you are teaching. I included a couple of personal examples. So on the left, you can see a bookmark that I created. Um, this was for a fluency lesson where I taught about um, our controlled vowels. And so often when teaching fluency, I worked with second graders and you tell the students not to read like robots. And so at the top of this bookmark, there's a robot with an X through it. And then there's a bunch of emojis on the bottom. And this reminds the students to read with emotion. And I actually have this with me. And this is something that in my future classroom, I can take, copy, laminate, make more copies of, share with others, and I can give it to my students again and again. Um, another example is on my right. I don't know if it's also on your right, but um, it is the picture with the fish. And so this is actually a lesson that I took bits and pieces of from the textbook. Um, and so I made and laminated index cards of fish and on the back I would put um, vocabulary words. And so as you can see, there's a cup and a sun. And so words like that pictures were on the back of these fish. And so what the lesson looks like is they would have a mini, if you've ever seen those mini blue pools and the fish index card would be in the pool with magnets on the back of them. The students would then take yardsticks with string and a magnet and fish for their words. So they would go fishing, attached to their pole that they would pull out would be a fish. And they would have to look at the word, the picture on the back, say the word, sound out the phonemes and count the phonemes. I have the objective that I wrote for this lesson plan written. And it says students will be able to segment and count the phonemes in a one syllable word on a fish shaped picture card by playing a fishing for phonemes game where students will take turns fishing with magnets to pick up a picture card. After using the scaffolding process, they will be able to one, name the picture aloud, two, sound out the phonemes, and three, count the number of phonemes in a one syllable word. So for example, they would fish, they would pick up the index card and say cup, k up, and then say that there are three phonemes in cup. And so these are just some examples of the lesson plans that I have created or I've seen peers create. 
And I just love that we have all of these resources to be able to use in a future classroom, all in a Google Drive or in a portfolio. And that is very beneficial for us and our future students. Um, on the next slide, I talk about my key takeaways. So what is the big picture and how did I self-evaluate myself after this class? And the first question is how did this help you understand learning about and teaching literacy? I'm gonna move my picture so I can see the screen. Um, and so this gave me a deeper understanding of the components of literacy because I had to answer the questions of what, why, when, and how. And I not only had to read the textbook, but I had to read and critique an article, write about it, and take all of this information from the resources and work that I've done and apply it to a lesson plan. Also, in all of the articles we read, there were examples of studies that did and did not work. And so I was given examples of what to do and what not to do in a classroom. And I had the opportunity to use my critical lens to decide if that would work for my students as well or not. I also had the opportunity to implement these skills during my field work. Although it was virtual, I still was very lucky where I got to work with second graders and I got to see for myself firsthand if what I was learning would work in a classroom setting. The next question I asked myself was how might it inform my process as a teacher? I believe that scaffolding and explicit instruction are very important when teaching. And these are two of the skills that I learned um, two of the many skills I learned in this classroom that I also saw in my fieldwork experience. And so as a future teacher, I know that I need to use scaffolding and learn how to use scaffolding techniques and use explicit instruction with my students. Um, I also read about research examples conducted in classrooms. And as I said earlier, this was in the articles. I got to be creative and think outside of the box. And this goes back to talking about the critical lens that I used. I think this is one of the most valuable techniques I learned through this class because it would be very easy to read an article or read a lesson plan and just use it because it's already made or go to one of the resources, which is Teachers Pay Teachers and just copy and paste a lesson plan from their website. But I learned that I need to look at it with a critical lens and ask myself, would this work for my students or not? And then be creative to fix it or use bits and pieces to inspire the new lesson plan that I would make. The last question that I asked myself was, what did I see in my classroom? I saw explicit instruction and scaffolding, which is very important. I also got to see a lot of imagination. And this helps me as a future teacher understand how to make lesson plans and use relevant information that the students will want to learn. And also as Michaela made, um, she made a lesson plan using a video game that they really love. And that encouraged me to see their imagination and use things that they love in my lessons as well. Um, the last one that I saw is reading. And now as that one is pretty obvious, there's a lot of reading in classrooms, but I am a firm believer that what our students do, we should do too. As future teachers, we should always be reading and researching to be able to answer those questions of what, why, when, and how because when we are inspired and when we are interested and engaged, our students will be too. With that being said, I'd like to pass this back to Dr. Gonzalez Fry. Okay, sorry, one more time, gotta switch it up real quick. And we should be good to go. Mm -hmm. Uh, so thank you so much to Michaela and Megan. To me, their perspective is everything and wholly important for what we do as professors here. And I just want to say that the publisher did not pay us to say those wonderful things about the textbook, but I'm really happy that um, my students responded well to that text. Um, some additional findings from pre-test to post-test. On these surveys, we, I used a paired t-test, and I did find a statistically significant difference in teacher candidates' knowledge of teaching literacy from the beginning to the end of uh, this course with a large Cohen's D for effect size. Um, in addition to what Michaela and Megan presented, based on the uh, teacher candidate evaluation, some major themes did emerge and a lot of them coincide with what was presented, um, but teacher candidates reported an increase in self-efficacy and confidence. And confidence was like a key term that came up a lot for reading and understanding journal articles, which at once felt daunting. 
Um, the biggest reported improvement was writing as a worthy expert of those articles, which we are as teachers. Um, the teacher candidates felt that they had tools in place to make instructional decisions um, for the future classroom for addressing reading difficulties and felt that they could support the reason or decisions. Um, and this was important because oftentimes we do get scripted programs or curriculums, but one size does not always fit all. And I wanted my students to understand that they could have the skills and tools in place to meet the needs of all their students in a really good, reliable way. Um, and lastly, many teacher candidates thoroughly enjoyed being creative and finding ways to make targeted, but learning joy-filled lessons and activities. And it really sparked something in them that I think um, was inspiring. Um, and I'm advance my slide. Um, and first off for me, the major takeaway was, I was never not blown away by the activities and lessons um, that the students developed. I have been teaching a variation of this course for about six years and the novelty, creativeness and effectiveness of the artifacts and the lessons never ceased to, to amaze me. Just like Megan, I left pretty inspired each time we did these presentations. Um, next steps, which we started, we'll be continuing to try out these lessons and activities with young learners so that my teacher candidates can have real feedback and data for assessments of how activities were being received by their students, which is very important having more choice and article selection in order to increase agency um, even more in my students and to make this more sustainable and generalizable so that when they are in the classroom, they know how to go out and, and find these resources for themselves. It's also important to acknowledge that the relationships between this project um, and the increase in knowledge is not causal because there are in fact, there were many factors that could have influenced their growth throughout that semester. Um, but the data is clear that this is one effective way to teach teacher candidates to marry that research and evidence with practice. Um, and some other next steps would include doing something similar to teach and increase linguistic knowledge of our future literacy teachers um, while they're taking their um, education courses. And that's the end. And thank you so much for joining us remotely and live. <laughs> and if you have any questions, um, here's my email. And thank you to Michaela and to um, Megan for being a part of this.